This lesson is going to be about um, the connection between shape and form. Um, so there's three basic shapes that I want to talk about. You have your rectangle, your circle, and your triangle. You don't have to be very good at drawing any of these shapes to draw successfully. First, I wanted to focus on the rectangle. Um, so essentially what we've done here is like we've accessed the XY axis. It's flat, right? But in drawing, we want to create this illusion that we're um, getting into the Z axis, right? That we're getting depth. Um, the simplest way everybody says to do that is just to overlap, right? But that's not really what we want to talk about just yet. Overlap is a different tool than using shape. Um, so I want to imagine that you like tilt this uh, rectangle. So if it is a rectangular form, if you tilt it, it goes back in space and away from you, right? If you tilt the top towards you, it might get a little bit bigger, go back in space that way, right? So essentially what we've done is we've kind of taken it back that way and taken it back that way. Or we've, you know, rotated the thing away from us and rotated the bottom away from us, depending. Now let's say that we want to like rotate, right? We want to take this rectangle and turn it, right? Now imagine that this really isn't a rectangle that we're looking at at this at the front of the box, right? And all we can see is is the sort of rectangular appearance of the box. When we rotate it, right? Let's say we rotate it the the direction that we've indicated we start to see another edge, right? So we've rotated it slightly. So let's say we do that again, we rotate again. Maybe we see a little more and a little less of this original square, okay? And then let's say we rotate it more and we get into kind of a 50-50 situation. We rotate it a little more, we get near the square We rotate it again, and let's say we're back to the square, right? If you read this sequence kind of left to right, you've rotated 90 degree rotation. Now, let's say we tilt, right? Let's say we, we're gonna take this object and bring it and tilt it towards us. So what we do is we take this shape and we tilt, right? Now, when you have this sort of thing going on and you tilt, it gets a little more complicated because we're tilting in one point perspective and now we're tilting in two point perspective. So again, we take this, we tilt. Now we take this thing, the 50-50, and we tilt. Okay, then we take, go over here and we tilt. So, and then we go back and we're back to where we started, right? So if we take a rectangular shape, we can potentially tilt it and we might be looking at a coffee mug and we actually tilt it and we see this sort of arc or we tilt it down, right? and we see that. Let's say it is like a full-on coffee mug, right? If we tilt it up, right? We've got our little handle. Say, we tilt it up, we see that, and we see our coffee mug. We tilt it the other direction, and we see our coffee mug. The real thing about drawing is that we're only ever working with shapes. We're never actually working directly with forms because we, we don't have three-dimensional space to work with. We're just creating this illusion of it. You know, another thing that might happen with um, using shapes is, let's say that we've got a shape like this, right? We've got a divided rectangle. Let's say we zoom in on it, right? And we just like, like we're far away from it now, we walk closer, all of a sudden we wind up in this 
two point perspective situation, right? Because we've gotten closer and closer to this sort of corner, right? So we've taken that shape and modified it. And then, you know, the other thing too is we could take this, this shape too, right? And we could tilt this shape and we could find out that we are in, that we're looking at a card, right? From head on. And that card is actually like bent or a piece of paper that's, that's folded, right? Um, and we could tilt it the other direction and it could be this sort of V shape thing. Right? So we've created different ways to tilt and create dimension. The triangle is kind of an underlying shape and the triangle is the key to linear perspective. Um, if you know anything about perspective, you pick vanishing points, you draw a bunch of lines going to the vanishing point, it creates depth, whatever. But really what you're working with is triangular geometry and perspective. So if we go back to this, um, this split rectangle, right? and with its two shapes. When we zoom in, in on it, we had this diagram. But what we're really talking about is two triangles right next to each other. That creates basically two vanishing points and a horizon line. And we just sort of cut them off and we get a box form, right? If we um, take those triangles and put them below a horizon line, and then we add another two triangles that cross each other, we get our box form, right? That's perspective, that's all it is. It's just connecting triangles together. Let's say you have this shape, right? You know, from one angle, it looks like a house, but we could take that shape and we could say, well, it's not really a house, it's a cube just done up in perspective, right? And that the back of the cube looks like that. You could also say, well, maybe it is a house, right? Maybe you've got that shape and you're going back and fanning out triangles in perspective and it is a house and you create a, a form based on this shape here. You could take this triangle, right? Run it back in any direction with any kind of crazy shape and put a line across it. And now you have some kind of rectangle in perspective, right? Just by drawing this uh, this triangle. Let's say you have a tall triangle like that. Um, that triangle could be your access to drawing a cone, right? And that cone could be just sort of comfortably sitting on the ground. Um, that cone could tilt backwards, right? So you could have that triangle shape and it could tilt backwards. Boom. You could also be working on a cylinder that's in perspective, right? So you could have your triangle going back like that. You could have your cylinder just going back in perspective. Let's say you want to do a, a perspective drawing um, and you pick your vanishing point and you start drawing some triangles, right? Off of that vanishing point. You could almost instantly make these into buildings, right? As if you're looking down on a city street. Cut those buildings off at the bottom. You could introduce a traffic circle and some streets connecting to the traffic circle. You might even need to get another side in there to make it make sense. The circle is a strange shape in terms of what we're dealing with. To make it dimensional, you know, you really just draw a circle. So let's say we're drawing a basketball, right? If we're looking dead on at a basketball, it's just sort of divided in half, right? By the line that goes around the hemisphere. But if we take that line and turn it, we create a sort of hemispherical line around the sphere. We can turn it the other direction and it can go like that. If the circle has light on it coming from this direction, maybe we create this ellipse and this whole area is in shadow and that helps us create depth. And it also creates a shadow going back in space, right? So when you tilt a circle, you create what's called an ellipse. 
and this ellipse could be fairly large-ish and it could be extremely narrow. If you create an axis and draw an ellipse, your ideal ellipse will have the same distance here, the same distance here, the same distance here, and the same distance here, such that you could f take any one of these four areas, A, B, C, and D, and exchange them, flip them around, and they would all match. So when you c combine this ellipse with a shape like a rectangle or something like that, you can create objects. And you can create organic objects as well with this idea of an ellipse. Um, and then when you combine, combine that with other tools, it gets even more fun. And we'll explore those in a later video.